Yo guys, um, so today we are continuing from what we did last time. So I want to keep the video very short. So what we are going to do in this video, we are going to do two things, right? Firstly, we are going to do the, we are going to calculate the length when are given two angles, right? And then we are going to just, we are going to do different scenarios. And then we are also going to calculate the angles as well, right? So it's just sides and angles. Remember on the previous video, we covered the um, Pythagorean theorem, we covered the trick ratios, and then I did a little bit more of introduction on triangles and squares and how they can ask you those kind of complicated questions, right? So today we are just covering two lessons, right? But that won't be the end of it. And then once you are done, please let me know so that we can finish the rest of this economic right so without wasting time guys um what you are going to do as i said we are going to be finding the length in right angle triangles so what you um if you've noticed so far we've only dealt with right angled triangles and on the previous video i told you we have four types of triangles right we have the right angle triangle the isosceles triangle the equilateral and the scaling triangle right so it does not mean that we only apply trigonometry on the right angle triangle, but the major one that we use is the right angle triangle. When we use the other triangles, we are going to do um to apply different rules, right? The cosine and the sine rules. That will be on the next video, right? So in this video, we continue with the right angle triangle, right? So when one angle and the length of one side are known, right? So if we know one angle and we know one side, it is possible to find the length of other sides in the same triangle by using sine, cosine, or tangent. We, we, we dealt with those three on the previous video, and then I, I gave you um, the, short, the easiest way to remember those things, right? So if we have this angle and one side, we can find this side and also that side, right? If we can find this side, we know that we can find the third one by using the theorem of Pythagoras, right? Same with this one. If we can find that one, we can automatically find that one. Right. So when we find one side, we must ensure that it is 100% correct. Because if that side is the value we get is wrong, it means the value we get for this side also will also be wrong. Right. So without wasting time, we are given an example here. This example we have 20 centimeters, which represents this hypotenuse. Because remember what I said last time: always the side that is opposite your 90 degree angle to hypotenuse side. So we are given 20 centimeters. Right. And then we are given 70 degrees, right? So before we can even start, I want to show you something, right? Before you can even answer the questions, what do you have to understand? Because they, they want us to calculate X, right? What you have to understand is this. This is the hypotenuse side. This would be our opposite side, right? Why is this our opposite side? Because it is the side that is opposite the angle we are given, right? Remember in the previous video, I said that your opposite side depends on the position of your angle. If the angle was here, the opposite side would be this side here, right? But in this case, it's not that side. It is this one here because the angle we are given is here and the side opposite that angle is this one, right? So this would be our adjacent side, our opposite side, and our hypotenuse side. But if you notice something, you notice that we have, we are given our hypotenuse side we are given an angle and we are required to calculate our, we are given our hypotenuse, we are required to, to calculate our opposite. So we have opposite and hypotenuse, and we know that the only trick ratio that um, uses opposite and hypotenuse is, is sine, right? So it means that we use sine to calculate the unknown sine. Right. That is how you just go about um, getting, you just, you just don't use any trick ratio that you want to use, right? Because um, cos and tangent won't apply right there, right? I hope you understand this. We'll do two more or one more example for you to understand. So what we are going to do, as I said, it's sine theta. In this case, you first write out your equation like that, that sine theta is cos to opposite over hypotenuse, right? We'll get one mark for that, just for knowing. But in this case, we, we in this case we can't continue to say theta because we know what is our theta. Remember that theta just represents any angle. In this case, our angle will be 
70 degrees. So we'll just say sine of 70 degrees, it is equal to, what is the opposite side? The opposite side is x, right? And then the hypotenuse side is 20, right? Then from there, what do you do? You simply cross multiply, right? Because remember that anything, um, when it's on its own, it is the same as over one, right? So we can just say, simply write, this is the numerator, right? Sign 70 degrees all over one. Then from there, you cross multiply. You multiply the x with the one, you get x. Then you multiply the 20 with sign 70, you get 20 sine 70. Then if you press this in your calculator, you get that 20 sine 70 is what? Is 18.8 centimeters, meaning that this side will be 18.8 centimeters, right? If you are given units, you must also use units. Don't forget that, guys. So this side will be 18.8. So in order for you to find this side, you use the theorem of Pythagoras, right? Because you have your R, you have your Y, you're just looking for your X, right? It's that simple. So you, most of the time you'll be told um, to wish the smart place, you must round off your, your final answer to. In this case, they told us that we must round it to one decimal point. So hence it is 18.8, right? In some cases, most of the time, they'll tell you to run to two decimal places. So it will be 18,2 other digits you find after the comma, right? So the value is obtained using your calculator, as I just said, right? It's that simple. I hope you understood, guys. So let's move on to, to the next um, example, right? So the next example, we are finding the length of the side marked with X again, right? So as we did with the previous example, we are going to do the very same thing, right? So firstly, you check where is my angle because already you know that that side is your hypotenuse side, right? So that is our R, it's our R, our hypotenuse side, right? And then we are we given that side? No, right? So we don't need that hypotenuse side in this case, right? So then what are we given? We are given an angle, and then the side that is opposite that angle is x. So meaning x is our, our opposite, right? And then we are also given this side. If we have this as opposite, this would be adjacent, right? Awesome. So we have, we are given the side, the opposite side, and we are given the adjacent side. So which sides are we given? The opposite side and the adjacent side. So which of the three trick ratios has opposite over adjacent? You know that it is trick, right? It's not it's trick, it's tan, so, right? Because your, opposite, your sine is opposite over hypotenuse and then your cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then your tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have the opposite side, we have the adjacent side. So we're going to use tangent, right? Awesome. Then from there, as always, you start by writing out the whole formula so that you get your one mark. So it's opposite over adjacent. What is our opposite side? Our opposite side is x in this case. What is our adjacent side? It's eight, we are given it's eight. And then our theta in this case is 40 degrees, we are given 40. And then again, you do the same thing. This over one, you cross multiply. This multiply by that would be eight tan um, 40, right? And then what is x multiplied by? by one, it is X, right, it's that simple. So from there, what do you do? You then go to your calculator, and then you type out the whole thing, this whole thing, here. eight turn 40 degrees, and then what do you get? You get 6.7, but you have to put it in meters because this eight was given in meters, right? It's that simple, guys, I hope this makes sense. It's simple, simple, simple. And then from there, we continue, right? The third example, I'll show you which this would be the last one, and from there, I'll give you exercises. So I'm expecting you to finish this video. This video is pretty simple, and the exercises I'm going to give you will be easy, but there are a lot of them, right? And another thing, guys, this thing of me sending you corrections, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think I'll do that, right? Because uh, right now, you, you write a lot of things, and some are not clear, and it's, difficult for me to, to do that. So just let me know which part you didn't understand because we are still going to write tests. That, 
it will be a day whereby I'll just send you a random test and I'll expect you to submit it on, I'll give you a day to say you must submit it on that day, right? So that I can see if you do understand. But I'm not saying that when you do these activities, you must not send me those activities because I checked them, right? But I'm just saying me having to write down the remedial and sending it back, it's too much, right? So what example number three is finding the length. Again, this is the last example I will do, guys. This is the last one I will do before we carry on, right? So what do we have? We have x again, right? So we are given x and then what is that side? This is our opposite side. So if that is our opposite side, this would be our adjacent side. So which of the three you has opposite and adjacent? We just said it's three, it's tangent, so right so you use tan as well here right so again you start by writing the full formula and then you substitute that theta by 42 degrees right so what we notice here is that um you use this 42 and then from there you get Okay, they used 48, I'll explain what happened. You use 42 and get this side, right? So this problem will involve the tangent, as I just said. So you use the other angle, which is 90 minus 42, right? Um, the reason why is, it will be 10, all over x, right? Because it is opposite over adjacent, will be equal to tan tan 42. So I, I just don't want you to be confused by what happened. It was just a shortcut I want to explain, right? From there, it is over one. Then this multiplied by that is 10, right? And then from there, you have x multiplied by that, it will be x tan 40, x tan 42, right? So you will go to your calculator, but not now because then you will get um, what you call decimals and everything. So it will ruin the whole thing. So from here, we are looking for x, right? So you can simply divide by tan 42 on both sides, right? Divide by tan 42, and then divide by tan 42 on the other side, and then they will cancel, right? So we divide by the same thing, right? So this side, you also divide by tan. And then from there, what you notice is that, I won't write it in, okay, let me just quickly. So what you notice here is that this, this will cancel that one, right? This one and that one will cancel. Then you go to your calculator, you write this out, you get the value of x, right? The answer you get there, you write it here, right? So here, to avoid all these steps, what they did, they used this angle here instead of that one. It doesn't mean if you use the angle there, you'll get it incorrect. How come did they get 42? We know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, they should give us 180. Right, so what they did because we know that here we already have the 90, there we have the 42, so they added 90 plus 42, right? Then the answer they got they said 180 minus that answer they got 48, so they used 48 instead, right? So it means the answer that we get here will be the same as 11.1, right? So here you calculate the hypotenuse, it's the same thing, guys, literally the same thing. There's nothing fancy, right? So with that being said, let's carry on, guys. Because all we were doing there is finding the angles, right? Finding the angles. So these are the exercises I will send you, guys, right? So as you can see, they always you're given one side and one angle, one side, one angle, one side, one angle. So you repeat what I just showed you, right? So what I want us to do right now is I want us, and these are real life applications, right? We are going to do that mostly on the next lesson when we do the angle of um, elevation and depression, right? 
But for now, I want you to master these things because if you don't master this, it will be difficult for you to understand why. Awesome. So with that being said, guys, the next section, which is the last one, we'll do the um, calculating because right now we were calculating one. We were calculating the lengths. So right now we calculate the angles still in the right angled triangle, right? So if the length of any two sides of a triangle is known, then sine cos tangent can be used to find the angle, right? Remember on the one of finding the length, what they do, they give you one angle and then they give you one side. They ask you to calculate the other side. Here they give you two sides, they ask you to calculate the angle. It's nothing fancy. Again, you check with this example here. Okay, let's start with this one. We are given 14 centimeters and then we are also given 20 centimeters, right? So the question that you should be asking yourself right now is what is this 14? Is it opposite? Is it adjacent? And the only way to find out, you check your angle that you give you given theta. So the side that is opposite theta will be the opposite side, right? So this is opposite 90 degrees. This would be your hypotenuse, right? So which among, let me use H. Which among the trick, the three trick ratios uses opposite of a hypotenuse? That is your your sine, right? Because sine of theta is equal to sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? Awesome. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. What is your opposite side? It's 14. What is your hypotenuse side? In this case, it's it's 20, right? So what you do here, guys, listen carefully. Because what we are, look, we are looking for is this theta, right? So you leave the theta, okay, you, you'll take this and put it there as it is. And then the next step, you leave your theta because that is what we're looking for, right? So you go to your calculator, you press shift, and then you press sign, shift sign, right? So it will give you something like that. We call that the inverse of sign, right? So don't say sign negative one, right? Is sign, the inverse of sign, then you'll put the whole of this in your brackets. And then it is always important to close your bracket because if you press this automatically, it will open a bracket for you. Close it, guys. Please close it, right? Don't tell me the answer will be the same. You'll regret it later. Just always close it. Then the answer you get there, that's your answer. But since it's, it's an angle, remember to always put degrees, right? You can't put centimeters. Right? So that is that. This is what I've, I was explaining. Use shift sign to get the inverse, right? So this would be the answer you get. I don't know if that made sense, guys, but I hope it did, right? So we'll do one more example, then I'll send you activities because this is easy. And as I said, I wanted to keep this video very, very short. So with that being said, um, the next example, again, we are given the triangle, we are given two sides again, 25 and four. So what are those sides we have? This is the opposite side because it's opposite this, right? So that would be opposite, let me use a different color. And this one, we know that it's hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degrees. So the left, the, the side that is left will be adjacent. So what uses opposite and adjacent is tan, right? So again, it's opposite over time, you write your formula in full, you get your first mark. Then you substitute opposite is 25, and then the adjacent is four. Then from here, what do you do? Theta is equal to turn off. Remember you go shift, and then you press turn this time, then it will give you that. What do we call that? The inverse of turn, right? So it will be inverse of turn, it will be 25 over four in this case. And then you press this as it is like this in your calculator, no shortcuts. And then remember what is important, always close your bracket. And then the answer of theta will be this here, right? Don't forget your degrees. But if you noticed we've been using sine and, and tan, we never used cos. It doesn't mean that they don't apply to cos, right? Because your cos is your, adjacent over hypotenuse, just like here. There's no opposite side here. This is the opposite side, right? There's nothing here. 
So we are given the hypotenuse and then we are given the adjacent. So adjacent of a hypotenuse, that is your cos. So you follow the same thing, follow the same thing. It will be cos theta over adjacent over hypotenuse and then what's next, it's five over 20. So at the end, you'll be having something like, um, let me write it here, theta is equal to the shift, you press cos, that is the inverse of cos, you, you will have um, five over 20, right? So at the end, you'll be having something like that. Then you get your answer after pressing it into your calculator. Then that will be it, guys. That's it for, for this lesson. On the next lesson, we are doing the cosine and the sine rule. We are doing the angle of depression and the angle of elevation. And then, yeah, that will be it for the trigonometry. Then maybe from there, after that video, after the next video, then you pay up, guys. Pay up. Yeah. So that's it from me, guys. Take care of yourselves. Remember that God loves you. So without wasting any more time, yeah, I'm out.